the car in front of you is a Mazda CX-5. That is the current trend in the Kenyan market as at, as at now. Actually, in the crossover segment, last time I said it's a threesome that is involving the Mazda CX-5, the Subaru Forest SJ, and the Nissan X-12 T32 series. Welcome to 0 to 6 Motor once again. My name is Bill C. Oturi, and today I'm going to give you a review of the 2016-2015 uh, Mazda CX-5 diesel. But this is not only a review, but it's going to be somewhat like a user review. So, back in uh, September 2022, we wanted a crossover. And uh, the Mazda CX-5 was the only car that actually hit all the right spots. So today I'm going to tell you how our ownership journey with the Mazda CX-5 has been. What has gone wrong. What we are liking about this car. And why the Mazda CX-5 was the only car that actually ticked all the spots. So I'm going to be brutally honest about uh, our ownership experience with this car. Because this is one of our support cars. And uh, possibly if uh, you are inter interested in purchasing a Mazda CX-5 that is a uh, 2015 or 2016 or even 2014, what possibly you should expect in your car ownership journey. Now this review is going to be somewhat different from the other ones because this is a car we have stayed with uh, for one year and uh, six months. But uh, for other reviews we normally stay with a car for maybe a week or sometimes days or sometimes one month. So get your popcorns ready. This one is going to be one kind of hell of a review. So when we were going into the market to show for a crossover, our budget was capped at uh, 2.2 million Kenyan shillings. And then we wanted something that uh, has decent fuel economy, we wanted something that uh, at least can uh, do slight off-roading, and then something that can actually be accommodative somewhat. So when we were looking at that budget, the only cars that uh, could uh, suit this budget was something like a uh, Nissan x trail a smaller car, something like uh, back then maybe a uh, Mitsubishi RVR, and the Mazda CX-5. I actually wanted a Subaru Forest XT, but then uh, that car is actually very expensive. That is why we went, uh, we put it out of the list. And then uh, the cars like uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander, the Honda CRV, those cars actually were out of the budget. That's how we ended up uh, shortlisting uh, the Mazda CX-5. So let me start uh, by describing how the mechanical life of this car has been. Literally, this car has not had uh, any major hitch. With the mechanical element of this car this car has been actually running for those uh, 18 months without skipping a bit so it's a car that uh, i'll say it's as it's reliable for us of course i know many people have been told come again in your mazda diesel or channel now of course uh, there are very many people who have a mazda cx5 a diesel maybe mazda tensor diesel mazda Xella diesel and those cars have actually given them uh, one of, uh, let me say, uh, a hell of a life. Something that uh, those cars have been uh, very, very troublesome. I'm not ruling out uh, those experiences. But then, there are still very many people who are actually enjoying their ownership experience with the Mazda CX-5, of which 0 to 60 is one of those people. So, we got this car when uh, the mileage was uh, around uh, 105,000 kilometers on the clock. Of course, I verified that and uh, when I was doing uh, the pre-purchase uh, assessment and inspection on this car. Currently, the odometer is at 131,700 kilometers. So you can see that uh, we have covered around uh, 26,000 kilometers uh, within a span of 18 months. That tells you that uh, we normally travel a lot. So immediately we purchased this car, there are of course uh, things that we did to this car. Actually, when I drove uh, from the car dealership, I drove straight to a garage whereby we did uh, some uh, preventative measures such that our experience uh, will not uh, be troublesome in the, in the long run. The first thing we did was actually a DPF delete. So we did a DPF delete back in 2022. It was costing 20, 25,000, I think. Yeah, we did a DPF delete. That is the mechanical delete. And then we did a software cancellation. So that way, we have not actually had any error to do with a DPF on this car for the 18 months. When I did a Mazda diesel maintenance video, actually I did that video on a car which is at I normally call it a twin because that car was bought at the same place with this one. Recall that I told you people that uh, Mazda diesels don't like sitting for long. These cars actually should be for long distance travel. So if uh, you want to purchase a Mazda diesel, make sure you are doing a DPF delete or you are doing a long distance travel. If uh, you are doing a short distances, keep it uh, petrol because uh, for these diesels, they have to actually travel. That is uh, 
how they are meant to be so the first thing we did is that we did is a dpf delete and then that way we solved very many problems there is no clogging that has happened on this car for that uh, time but still there are people who normally purchase that these are uh, mazda diesels and they don't do the dpf delete because they normally do maybe long distance travels of course uh, you can live with that uh, for quite some time but um when I'm looking at something like uh, the quality of our fuel, yes, I'm not saying that the quality of our fuel is that bad, but if uh, you compare the lifespan of this car in Kenya and overseas, there is a high likelihood that uh, even if you cover long distances, the DPF uh, will clog faster on our Kenyan uh, using, when you're using our Kenyan fuel compared to maybe overseas. That's why I normally say that uh, it has a higher levels of suit. That's why I say that uh, if you can, immediately you make a purchase of the Mazda CX-5, uh, then uh, you should do a DPF delete. The second thing I did is actually ensuring that the cooling system of this car is uh, solid. By solid I mean previously Mazda CX-5 uh, people will tell you that uh, they had overheating issues. So when I was looking at uh, the cooling system of the Mazda CX-5, the main weakness was this junction cooler bypass. So immediately after doing uh, the DPF delete in the same garage we did uh, we swapped these uh, plastic cooler bypass with a metallic one actually this is as, as good as it is if uh, maybe you don't have coins uh, for purchasing a metallic one you can actually ring me i'll give you this for free so this cooler bypass actually has a weakness at this spot normally it can uh, when uh, the car uh, the cars travel for over long distances and uh, it has uh, heated properly it has a weakness of giving up at this spot so it will leak and uh, the coolant will uh, will uh, spill down and that is how the problem of overheating comes about so the second thing we did was uh, strengthening the cooling system of this car back then the cooler bypass uh, uh, the junction pipe actually cost us uh, around uh, 10,000 shillings currently because of a uh, higher demand I'm pretty sure that uh, the cost has gone up uh, by a thousand bob so that is the second thing we did we did so the cooling system of this car is as good as uh, as any, any other car out there which uh, can be called uh, reliable at some point we have uh, covered a uh, long distance travel uh, of uh, 300, 300 kilometers without actually stopping and um, sometimes uh, this car actually covers a uh, distance of uh, even 800 kilometers per per day so that tells you that uh, the cooling system of this car is as good as, uh, as it should be so that's the second hack we did uh, for this car So another thing you may want to learn about uh, the ownership of a uh, journal of this car when it comes to maintaining it me mechanically is that uh, this car has only been running on a uh, 5w30 oil it's important that uh, you use the manufacturer's recommended oil which is actually 5w30 that gives your engine a longer lifespan of course you can use a 5w40 but the car will uh, some be, will be somewhat uh, heavier this car actually has been running on a uh, wolver 5w30 for those 18 months it, it's only at one instance that uh, we used a uh, castro 5w30 but uh, i'm not saying that you only use wolver but uh, make sure you stick to to the manufacturer's uh, recommended oil because this actually is going to give your engine a longer lifespan our work as zero to six motoring involves uh, checking cars and inspection that means that we actually travel a lot so we wanted a car that is uh, fuel efficient when i'm looking at uh, the consumption of this car 2.2 turbo diesel with all wheel drive i'm looking at figures around 14 kilometers per liter of course that is low for for, for a diesel 2.2 but this car i normally gun it like it's stolen that's why the figures can be somewhat lower but when i'm comparing this car with our other support car which is a total mark x which is also all wheel drive because our, our cars actually are all all wheel drive i think uh, this one actually has the best fuel economy because for the other car i'm looking at figures around 10 uh, sometimes when i gun it uh, properly around uh, 9.5 kilometers per liter so the second reason why we opted for this uh, mazda cx5 was fuel economy and it, it is actually giving good figures if uh, you are about to purchase a mazda cx5 or uh, maybe a front wheel drive or all wheel drive you can get better figures when i'm going to church i normally drive sensibly i can the figures here actually can actually click around 15 16 kilometers per liter but over long distances when i'm gunning this thing properly the figures here will be around 14 sometimes they even drop to 13.5 kilometers per liter which is not much of a bother considering that the only alternative we have is a 2.5 liter v6 uh, petrol which uh, we will uh, consume more fuel another thing i like about this uh, mazda cx5 is it's a uh, power and torque 
because we are looking at 175 uh, uh, horsepower and 420 newton meters of torque now for 20 newton meters of torque that is a pickup territory basically when i'm looking at uh, at overtaking in this car or uh, acceleration you don't need to pin this uh, car for it to actually make grand and that is how the torque element comes in because when you're doing uh, something like uh, 80 r kilometers per hour and you want to overtake you just uh, need to tap uh, the gas pedal a little bit and then uh, you get that uh, overtaking kick and um, that is what actually makes uh, this car that's that is, that is what i like about this car of course uh, for the petrol something like a 2.5 liter it can also accelerate pretty well but uh, you you have to pin it a little bit hard which now becomes a liability when it comes to, to fuel consumption if uh, you want to purchase a mazda cx5 it's a good learning that all mazda cx5 uh, either come with a six-speed automatic gearbox or a six-speed manual transmission that is actually one of the biggest advantage of purchasing a mazda cx5 over majority of the cars in this segment because cars are like uh, the mitsubishi outlander the nissan x trailer the honda crv some versions of the Toyota rav4 and the subaru forest sj normally come with a cvt gearbox now for those people who are interested in driving dynamics there are things that uh, CV, the, the behavior of a CVT gearbox is not something that uh, many people are going to like. Even in the mechanical element in terms of reliability and uh, the driving dynamics, you may not like uh, how a CVT gearbox uh, drives. Now, apart from uh, the driving element of a conventional automatic versus a CVT gearbox, another thing uh, that you may want to learn about this automatic gearbox is that it, it tags along bulletproof reliability because for this car it's actually simple to maintain uh, in terms of the drive train in terms of the gearbox because it doesn't break uh, easily uh, if uh, you like uh, taking matters into your own hands or uh, you can actually use your two legs to drive it's also good learning that uh, you can opt for a six-speed manual gearbox now i've actually used that uh, six-speed manual gearbox in the mazda in the cx5 and uh, mazda cx5 diesel which was uh, xuk and it's a gearbox i really like but then not many people are going to uh going to like uh, driving a manual gearbox especially because it it calls for a lot especially in traffic so majority of the people are going to purchase this automatic gearbox and it's good uh, it's prudent telling you that uh, it's among the most uh, reliable gearbox uh, out there actually when i'm looking at this uh, segment in this uh, crossover segment well the engine may not uh, be as good as the rivals the gearbox of for the mazda cx5 is the best in this class the braking of this car is something i really don't like uh, compared to other crossovers because uh, my work entails are uh, checking a car uh, maybe scouting for them in nairobi sometimes in nakuru driving them back that involves a lot of a long distance uh, traveling the braking system of this car is actually um, let me say the poorest in the class because it is easy reinding someone because uh, the braking distance of this car is uh, somewhat longer so we have uh, tried to do some uh, checks here and there but uh, we have not uh, yielded any fruit but uh, it's not that bad especially when you are doing a uh, crazy highway speeds and you don't want to kill all that momentum then uh, it's perfectly okay for that but then uh, many people especially if you are coming from a different crossover to this one something like a something like a Subaru Forester something like a Mitsubishi Outlander or something like a VW Tiguan you are going to struggle adapting to the braking of this car it's uh, it's really poor if I may use that term So there is this question I normally get uh, most of the time. Should do I buy a petrol Mazda CX-5 or a diesel one? If I was in your shoes, I'll buy a Mazda CX-5 diesel Monday to Saturday and twice on Sundays. But uh, majority of people, I normally advise them to buy petrols, especially those people who don't want to do some modifications here and there, and those people who normally do short travels and maybe they don't want something that uh, can uh, can may need some work i normally tell them to purchase uh, to purchase a uh, petrol flavor but uh, when i'm looking at uh, the fuel economy of this car the power rating and um, uh, yeah yeah fuel economy and the power rating and even the price tag then i don't see the reason why you should not place your coin on the mazda cx5 diesel 
if uh, you can meet uh, the price tag of the 2.5 liter and uh, maybe you can afford fueling it then uh, there is no reason why you should not uh, consider purchasing that car uh, it's uh, it's also as good as this one in terms of uh, power delivery on the road but uh, for the two po the 2000 cc engine which is uh, the 2000 cc version which is uh, lazier than this one and it's pricier uh, i have mixed the feelings about that car but uh, if a reliability is the only thing you are looking at um, is the only thing on your priority list then uh, you can also consider that car so the comparison of this car versus uh, the the diesel versus the petrol ones is that uh, petrol ones are more reliable that one there's no question about that but uh, the diesel if it doesn't act up in terms of reliability it will be cheaper to run in the long run the current pricing uh, of a mazda cx5 2.2 turbo diesel a base model something like ours is uh, around 2.5 million shillings we bought this car at uh, 2.2 million shillings 18 months ago so you can see that uh, there has been a price hike of around 300,000 shillings that tells you that uh, things are getting crazier the economy is in the loop uh, if you are looking at uh, 2000 cc petrol we recently scouted for one and uh, run inspection and purchased one at 2.8 million shillings a 2.5 liter it's going to cost a more maybe at around 2.93 million shillings because it attracts higher duty so you can actually see that uh, if uh, you have uh, around a 2.5 2.6 million shillings and you don't want a small car something like a honda vessel or something like uh, yeah something like a honda vessel then the mazda cx5 is 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 is, 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 is the car to consider because when you're looking at the rival something like a mitsubishi outlander is going for 3.2 million shillings something like an antarbo subaru forester a very lazy car it's also it's going for around uh, around uh, 3 million shillings that's for a uh, full spec something like a subaru forest xt it's going for around 3.6 or uh, the north of that coin i want a crv also 3.5 million shillings at water also at 3.5 million shillings so basically the mazda cx5 is the cheapest car in that segment even an Nissan x trail is uh, more expensive than a uh, mazda cx5 so you can see that also accounts for the reason why you are seeing uh, that's, uh, that also accounts for the reason why the car in front of you nowadays is a mazda cx5 because of their cheaper price tag compared to the rivals another reason maybe you may look at diesels mostly diesels come fully loaded not like our car which is a bare bone or a poverty spec which has a lower specifications basically the reason we went for this car is because of uh, it has all-wheel drive because you rarely get all-wheel drive for the base models so for the diesels it's easier getting a full spec diesel by full spec i mean fully loaded uh, with many features something like a sunroof something like a, a leather seat so with a heated function and sometimes a memory is setting up for the front passenger for the driver uh, something like um, a bow sound system 19 inch wheels those are things that you get in the fully loaded uh, sometimes uh, the the diesel you can also find those features in uh, something like a 2.5 liter petrol but something like a sunroof and all will drive you'll struggle very much getting it uh, in uh, in the 2.5 liter petrol uh, something like a 2000 cc petrol uh, engine that one normally it's, it, it comes as a base model don't expect uh, it uh, to tag many features uh, because uh, if most of the seats uh, most of the versions will be coming with the fabric seats uh, it will mostly be a front wheel drive and then unless it's ex singapore or ex australia that's when you can actually get uh, something like uh, leather seats in that car and maybe all will drive so what uh, may propel someone into a diesel flavor is the the fact that uh, you're, you are going easily you're going to get uh, more features in the diesels than uh, the probability of getting more features in the diesels is higher than uh, in the petrol flavors so this is how the car looks like uh, 18 months down the line up front here nothing has gone wrong but because this was a base model we had to actually install aftermarket fogs because this one may look may look uh, may not look like uh, the factory lights up front nothing has gone wrong but when you're looking at this car is is, is is it's as good as it was uh, during uh, when it was actually driving off from the showroom on the other side we actually some uh, some rock drive actually rear-ended us on this uh, left side and uh, we have actually struggled to get uh, these uh, specific lens for this uh, light that that may be as uh, that as is the only problem on the other side and that's why this uh, boot may not be as, as smooth as it should be so these are base model as i was describing that way you can see that it comes with these uh, 
17 inch alloy rims if you will settle for the full spec version of course you're going to get it uh, with the uh, 19 inch rims another thing you may want to learn is that uh, the side mirrors uh, for this car of course have started uh, being moody of course that is a common problem with the with mazdas now let's see what has gone wrong in the interior what we like about the interior this is how the cabin of this car looks like eh? the features in this car include a cruise controller volume control buttons here tire pressure monitoring system traction control and eye stop eh? in the interior if uh, you will purchase a mazda cx5 it's also good learning that uh, this button here sometimes it is it is going to break that's why you can see we have a modified it with a with a screw so it's something that that i should not uh, make you freak out it's it's a common problem they normally crack for the second rear seats you can these seats are actually pretty comfortable they don't uh you are go not going to start with comfort over long distance the headroom is also pretty good of course this x5 when uh, you compare it with something like, like an x-rail the second row seat is it's it's somewhat crammed up but i don't have a problem with it now you can actually tell uh, when the, the child seat is uh, installed here you can see that uh, the practicality in the area space is a little bit limited uh, we have a uh, zero to six merchandise you can actually order them uh, on our platform you can actually ring as we are going to give you t-shirts caps uh, hoodies also another big question you may be asking yourself is where we service this car so this car has been serviced by one garage since it landed in kenya that is a finest garage in ruiru most probably the best if not one of the best uh, places to service your mazda so if you have a mazda demio a mazda xl or a mazda 3 a mazda 6 or mazda tenza a mazda cx5 a mazda cx8 mazda cx7 even mazda cx9 uh, the best place to service your mazda is a finest garage in uh, ruiru so those people have been taking care of this car since it landed 18 months down the line no hiccup so far it is uh, breathing properly as it was during the one if you want to buy a mazda cx5 a diesel or even the petrol ones something like the mazda tenza because the cx5 shares engines with the tenza i bet you now know how it uh, how the ownership experience after one and a half years or even two years uh, goes so if you also want to, uh, to purchase a Mazda CX-5, whether it's local used or uh, it's a fresh import, you can always shoot us a message or ring us. We are going to scout a car for you, inspect it, and then make your car ownership journey easy. That is the goal of 0 to 6 motoring. Alright guys, I'll see you on the next one on 0 to 6 motoring. <laughs>